Hey everybody, welcome back to Better Computer. My name is Matt. And a few weeks ago, I made a video on this channel where I showed the new M2 Mac Mini, uh, which I purchased with the intention of using it as a sort of network-attached storage in my home because I've been using a network-attached storage for the past couple of years, a Western Digital one that I just got from Best Buy, and it's been okay. It kind of proved the concept that it's a useful thing for me to have in my life, but it was really slow and it wasn't able to do a lot of the things that I wanted to do, like even using it as a Plex server wasn't really practical because the file transfer was so slow and because the processor inside was just so, 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 so slow that it wasn't able to transcode video effectively. So like it was able to be used as like cold storage for files, but I wasn't able to like really do as much as I wanted with that. So I was looking to upgrade. And so the natural upgrade path is obviously to look at Synology, right? A lot of people have Synologies and are happy with them, and it's a great name in the space. And I was checking them out, and I was pricing out what I would want to get, and it was just really expensive. It was really expensive to get something that was an upgrade over what I had. And I was also worried about things like drive performance, not in terms of reliability, but in terms of speed, like how quickly was I going to be able to get the files that I put on there. Um, I was worried about the performance uh, just in general, like there's Intel Celerons in a lot of these, which aren't super fast. Um, so if I want to do anything beyond just like file storage, it's going to be really, really slow. Um, and I was worried about the fan noise, right? These things have big fans in them to keep them cool. And I have a small office that this was going to have to be in, and I was going to hear those fans all the time. So it just wasn't that appealing to me. And then when I saw the Mac Mini and was thinking about how I would set it up with a couple external hard drives, it really seemed like a better solution for me. So let's go over to my office and I'll show you the setup and I'll show you what I'm doing in Mac OS and a couple apps that I'm using to really streamline my process and get some cool stuff out of it. Okay, so here is the Mac Mini. It's right next to my desk. Um, but basically these drives are normally tucked away, but I pulled them out so you can kind of see them. Uh, but basically I have an ethernet port plugged into the back of the mini, and then I have three hard drives currently with a slot open for another one or a USB port open for another one, I should say. And so on the right, I've got a one terabyte Samsung T7 SSD. In the middle, the blue one is a two terabyte Samsung T7 SSD. And then on the left is a Western Digital four terabyte spinning hard drive, uh, which is definitely the slowest one. I have that one called cold storage. Um, and basically the ones on the right are for files that I need to access somewhat regularly. And when I do access them, I want them to be quick. And on the left is my cold storage one, which is for files that I want to have, but I almost never need to actually access. And when I do, speed isn't of the essence. So let's jump into the screen share to show you what is going on uh, with the software. Okay, so we are on my computer now. We're looking at my MacBook Pro, and in the Finder, in the Network tab, you can see a couple devices, and my Mac Mini just shows up here, uh, which is great. So I can click into that, and you can see that the drives are available, as well as just the Macintosh hard drive in my home folder. So they're all just available on the network. I'll show you how to make sure those are set up correctly in a second. Um, but as a use case, uh, if I go into like cold storage, for example, I can go to a better computer, I can go to uh, my assets, and let's say I wanted to bring this over to a local folder I've got right here, right? Let's actually break these apart so you can see. Um, let's go ahead and just drag this to my local computer. It downloads really quickly and I've got it here, right? Um, so that's there. And if I ever wanted to like upload this file uh, over the network, it just transfers and it's nice and quick, really, really nice. I can even airdrop if I want, which is fantastic. If I just wanna just airdrop it, don't deal with any file management at all. Um, that's just a nice backup to have. I should also mention that this will work from the Files app on your iPhone and iPad too. So this is just, just the very basic uh, network attached storage stuff you'd expect. Um, but one of the really nice things that I'll show you how to set it up now is that because it's a full blown Mac, I can just hit share screen and I will see, Hey, there it is. And I'm just remote desktoping into the Mac and it's fully functional. It's got all the apps here that I'd want to use. I can install whatever I want because again, there's no limits on it. It's a full blown Mac. You can see the three drives that are connected here and you can navigate them and do all that stuff. But let me show you how to make sure that everything is visible on the network. So on the Mac that's acting as the file server, you wanna go into the system settings, go to general, and then sharing is right here. Go into that and you're gonna see file sharing. You wanna make sure this is turned on. Now by default, this is only gonna share one folder in your home directory, your public folder. You wanna act, uh, give access to more things. So what I did is just hit the I here and you can add whatever folders you want. And 
for me, just adding the home directory for myself uh, was great. That gave access to everything. And now as long as I'm able to authenticate as my user, so as the user for this Mac mini, I can read and write to basically anything on the computer, <clears throat> which is great. Uh, I will say that this will make it work for Apple devices. If you want to make it work for Windows, hit options, and then make sure share files and folders using SMB is enabled. Uh, and then that will make it so that Windows devices can connect as well. We're not going to go over that in this video because it's complicated and annoying, but um, I'll put a link with instructions to it in the description for you. Now, file storage is nice and everything, but you can do more with uh, some of this. Like, what sort of files are you storing? So if I go into this two terabyte one, you can see I have a whole bunch of Digital Foundry uh, videos here, right? These are all sorts of Digital Foundry videos. Um, I pay for their uh, Patreon, so I'm able to get downloads, like high quality downloads of their stuff. And I think their stuff is really good. I think it's really valuable. And it is actually some of the rare stuff on YouTube that actually does benefit from the higher bit rates that you're able to get from these guys rather than what YouTube compresses it down to. So I download these files, I put them into this folder. And then there's actually an app for the Mac and for tvOS and iPad and iPhone as well uh, called Infuse. Uh, I'll put it on screen here. But basically, it's like Plex in that you just point it at uh, specific folders on your network and you're able to stream those videos anywhere. Uh, and so I will actually uh, download these videos to my Mac mini. I'll put them in this folder on the uh, network attached storage, and then I will be able to stream it to my TV on the Apple TV. And it's just a really nice, really seamless experience. And I can't speak for everyone, but the performance of these, these are 4K 60 FPS videos, uh, pretty high bit rate, and they stream perfectly for me, um, which is not a thing I was able to do on the old Western Digital one. So that's a really nice use case. Um, and you could do Plex. So I think there's an open source one that I'm blanking on the name, but we'll put it on the screen now to make sure you see it. But um, I also have another series. I'm going to show you another app that I use to kind of make this really, really clever. Um, Quarter Digital, uh, they do a series called VFX Artist React. It's one of my favorite series on YouTube. They've done like 94 episodes and I use YouTube DL to download them. So let's get this out of the way. Um, we're going to leave this open. This is again on one of the drives and we're just gonna open the downloads folder, which is empty right now. I'm gonna open my terminal and I'm gonna download the most recent episode. I've got this queued up, so I know this is the URL. I'm gonna download the most recent episode of VFX Artists React. You should see the part file here, and then it's just gonna finish up here in a second. So I've got the video, perfect. And now in a second, you're gonna see it. Uh, yeah, it's gone, what happened to it? So uh, that was episode 94. Um, and if I go over here, you can see Hey, episode 94 is right here. It's on my uh, two terabyte connected drive. So how did that work? Um, that worked with, let me clear this out of the way, an app called Hazel. Hazel is a really cool app that basically watches folders on your computer and you can set rules for when certain things happen, you can have it do things. And so there's a ton here, maybe I should make a whole video about this app, um, but basically I have it watching the downloads folder on my Mac mini and you have specific rules. So this rule is for VFX Artist React and if all the following conditions are met, the extension is MP4 and the name contains the string VFX Artist React. If both of those are met on a new file, it will move the file to a specific folder, which is at VFX Artist React um, on the two terabyte SSD. And there's a whole bunch of other things, like a ton of other things you can do here. Um, but that's what I have for VFX Artist Reacts episodes. So I can just download them from the terminal and they'll automatically load onto there. And then Infuse is looking at that folder. So it's gonna see those and I can just basically download the, fo the folder here, or download the file here, walk away. And then when I go to my Apple TV, it'll just be there available for me to stream. I do the same thing, very similar uh, with DF Retro, that's Digital Foundry Retro series, um, as well as the normal Digital Foundry videos. So I have automations to make it so I can download these files and then they're automatically filtered into the folders that I want them to be. And they're made available in Infuse so I can watch them on whatever devices I want. So yeah, that's a quick look at how I'm starting to use this. I'm sure there are more things I can do and will do in the future, but that's what I'm doing right now. And I think it's actually a really 
it's definitely an improvement over what I had before. So I'm quite happy uh, with the setup. So hopefully that was interesting to you. If it was, drop a like down below and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.